So following um, the recent use case demos we've done of audit and updated rows and action columns, um, we had another interesting use case come up um, last couple of days, which I thought um, would be worth doing a video for because again, it shows some of the hidden power in the adaptable blotter. The background was simple, and that was that they had a fairly standard validation rule, um, which up till now they've been doing using our cell validation client function, but then they wanted to tweak it. So the original rule was simple, and that was that for a given column, in this case we're using a fictional data set in the excellent AG grid, um, but let's look at this amount column, and the rule was something like the value had to be between 20 and 80. So if you did, you know, 123, that would fail, and if you did 11, that would fail. So to enable that rule, you do um, cell validation. So um, it's very straightforward. You create a cell validation rule. You can choose whether to prevent a cell edit or show a warning. We will prevent the cell edit. Um, it knows what the column is, and you can choose whether to disallow all edits. That's for the case where um, a column has wrongly been allowed to be editable. But we're going to use this, which obviously is much more flexible, which for that column allows you to choose between a huge range of options, you know, what the percentage change is, how much it's changed, etc. So we're going to use the um, not between. So we disallow edits where the new cell value matches the rule that it's not between 20 and 100. If you want to, you can make a query where you base that on other columns. We don't need to. So we finish and there's our straightforward rule. And now if I come into here, I make that 56, that's fine. But if I make that 11, I get my, my validation rule, which obviously I can see here. And um, if I make it 123, it's the same thing. But then they wanted something cleverer. They wanted to say, well, that's fine. But when the value is, when the inputted value is less than 20, or if the inputted value is greater than 100, they wanted the new value given by the user to change to those boundaries, i.e. if you type in 11, it should become 20, and if you type in 150, it should become 100. So the way to do that is through server validation. Um, as you know, if you've used the adaptable blotter, we have many, many options that we provide um, when you set it up, and one of them is edit options. And that includes, as part of edit options, it includes a validate on server function, which is essentially when you listen to a change and you can return a uh, validation result. And a validation result um, itself returns two things, a new value. So this is what you, you want the, the um, cell to show and also optionally a message. So if you're happy with the um, proposed new value by the user, you can leave it free or you can return a different value. Um, and in, optionally, as I say, you can send a message. So this also allows you to swallow it. So you can just return nothing and then later use some of our um, API methods to put the real value either in the grid or in the underlying data set. So how does that work in practice? Well, let's have a look at that here. We have some code. Um, but I have the code ready, a bit like Blue Peter. So let me just set that to true so it will run. And essentially what happens here is um, in our edit options, we use a validate on server, which listens to this data changed info. The data changed info object um, is a very useful object that basically contains the old value, the new value, the column and the primary key. And then what we've done is we return a promise and we say we're going to run this function, which is here, get server edit on response. And essentially what this function is doing is it's listening. It's basically checking and it's saying if the column that's changed is the amount column, we've got three rules. OK, we've got an initial slightly silly rule, which we saying if it's 50, we don't allow it. That's just uh, I'm not quite sure why about that, but let's imagine that's what someone wanted. It can never be 50. So if you do that, it reverts to the old amount. Now here are the two rules we were talking about before. We said if the new value is greater than 100, then set the new value to be 100 with a message. And if the new value is less than 20, set that to be 20 again with a message. So that's all it is. It's a function that we provide, not in the adaptable blotter, but we're providing in our um, in harness. This is the function you would provide. And obviously here you could go off to the server, you could do anything you want. So now if we go back to the adaptable blotter, um, we will say that we will see the same thing happen. 
So if I um, make this 23, that's fine. If I make this 12, I now say the amount can't be between 20 and 100. I get a message which appears. Oh, sorry. Let me turn off cell validation because otherwise that's going to take on. So we should um, go to cell validation and we should delete this rule. Okay. So let's now delete this rule and let's now start again. So if I do 12, there we are. We've now got server validation and it's saying the amount can't be less than 20 and it jumps it to 20. And if I do 123, it does the same thing. And in fact, we saw the 50 rule as well. So if I do 50, we get the rule, can't set the amount to 50 and it goes back again. So uh, that's that. If you don't want to see the message, um, you don't have to. So if we go back to our code, for instance, um, let's say for the 100 rule, if we don't show a message, we can just comment that out. And then when we rerun it now, we will still have the change. So if I make this 123, it will still jump to 100, but I won't see anything. Um, and the last thing we did was we, um, I've added a little, um, a little test here. So what I've done here is um, I've added an action column button. For those of you who don't know what action column buttons are, they're very, very simple. In your predefined config, you just define a button and some button text if you want to render it you can we've got videos that show that this is a very simple example and then you listen um, through our event api to the action column clicked event and then you can say what you want to happen so let me just show you that quickly so if we go back to our documentation if we go to the event api you'll see there's a whole load of different functions that we can a whole load of different um, events that we fire and we're firing here the action column clicked event, which is when a button has been clicked. And what do we do? So when it gets clicked, um, we listen to the args. And you can see here it's got this args data zero ID because we're using FDC3 schema. And basically, we're running another adaptable blotter API function called set value, which, as you can see, takes a column ID, a new value, and a primary key. We get the primary key from the args. So we're just saying here we want to set the cell in the amount column which for the current row I'm in to be 50. Um, it's just basically, um, and this, this set cell value, as I say, is in our API. You can see it here, or obviously like all our functions, we do have a very powerful API. So you go to grid API and then you'll see it mentioned here. And it's this one, set, set cell value. So what happens when we do that? So essentially exactly the same thing happens. I click this button it will run the service, it will, it will call that method, that method will run server validation, and then it should return an error. So there we are, it comes back and says you can't set it to 50. Um, and obviously, you know, that will work irrespective of what I do. So if I make this one to be 145, so we want to set the cell value here, which in whichever row I click the button to be 145, then obviously you will see it go back to 100, and because we turned off the message, um, we don't see the message. If we did, we would. So that's all it is. It's server validation. It allows you to check any edit um, using your own custom functionality. So you can do lookups, you can do anything you like. And as I say, you can either return nothing and then just allow the edit to go through. And if you want, that's because you're swallowing it because you're then going to change it later through many of our different methods to update the API. Or you can immediately return what you want the new value to be, we will display that value. And additionally, if you display a message, we will show that also. So that server validation, it's a companion to the cell validation. The two of them can, of course, work in sync and cell validation will take precedence. Um, and we see that again, because if I now add a cell validation rule, so if I had a very quick rule um, to say, uh, for whatever reason, let's, let's disallow it where it's 34, even though my server validation will allow that because there's nothing wrong with that. Now, as soon as I type 34, I break the cell validation. So the custom cell validation on the client comes first, but then you can also run server validation as an additional check. And that allows you to have complete control over anything the user does in the blotter. And lastly, because of course we've got a full powerful audit, all these checks, all these messages are returned, everything that goes on, the edits, the 
validation messages, the return value is audited so you've got a complete trail of all your activity. As ever, thanks for watching and any questions please get in touch.